Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 coming to you from Channels Television here in Lagos. A reminder of our major stories tonight. The federal government approves a plan for the nation's dwindling economy, raises task force, reduce food prices nationwide. Lagos state government toughens its law on kidnapping as Governor Kiwumi Ambode approves life imprisonment for culprits. Some IDPs living in Yobe refuse to return to their ancestral homes over fears of renewed attacks by Boko Haram. And the African Union calls for massive withdrawal of membership of the International Criminal Court. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. A reminder here that having the Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. While kidnappers in Lagos are now to be sentenced to life imprisonment, those convicted in Ogun State will back 25 years in jail. It is under this law that the suspects linked to the kidnap at the Nigerian Tulip International School in Ogun State will be tried. In an interview with Channel Television Today in Lagos, the suspects allege there are over five camps in the Ajegunle Creeks alone. More operation needs to be carried out around the Lagos and Ogun Creeks to help curb them. Parents and guardians showing their displeasure to the school management and government a day after gunmen struck at the Nigeria Turkish International School, Isheri Ogun State, kidnapping eight people. About two weeks after, the victims have been released. Although ransom was paid, the police authorities had promised that those behind the evil act would be arrested and their loot recovered, and they seems to be keeping to their words. 21-year-old Super Alex, also known as Nyanga, is a member of the gang. He was picked up by the intelligence response team detectives minutes after stepping out of the creeks. He explains that 10 of their other 20 members and eight rifles were used in the school operation. We no go. That uh, people, school people, we carry gun. We no go beat them because uh, that was small girl, that small that was small. The they tell this, that small to talk to. First, not trust anybody for it, eh? because uh, Papa, they find for your people get money, they go feed pay. They have to pay the 50 million. People will people go do the work. Eh? They give her 22 million. All of them will come from Arugbo. Eh? This time they do bunkery. Now we do kidnapping now, we do not kidnapping with the do. Spelling out his role, likened to that of a batman in the military, rendering service to leaders of the gang, 24-year-old Egbasimokumo Ayomi claims he joined the gang a week before the Tulip School operation and got his share of the loot. I just come from last week. When I can't reach that side, then kidnap people. I follow them, watch their shirts, treasure and cook for them. That is my own work. From the man, they give me 150. They are in our custody, and we are just working to get others uh, arrested. So that should the police have the capacity to do this job. As the police intensify efforts to apprehend other members of the gang, it's important for security agencies to harmonize their operations and ensure that other criminals do not have any room to operate. 41 Nigerians have been deported from the United Kingdom for various immigration offences. The deportees arrived at the Muslim Mohammed International Airport in the wee hours of this morning. On hand to receive them were officials of the National Emergency Management Agency and other relevant agencies. The Deputy Director, Search and Rescue at NEMA, Mr. Onimode Bandili, said the 41 people were arrested in the UK for not having valid residency or work permits.
There are no prisoners on board this aircraft. You may have heard about the Nigerian government through our High Commission in the UK are working on the possibility of assisting those ones to get off the hook and come back home. But as I speak to you, the ones we received today, there are no prisoners on board. So it's our responsibility, NEMA, on behalf of the federal government to ensure that one, they are well received, and we need to talk to them, cancel them, and let them realize that the country they left some years ago, it's not the same country they are meeting today. We have moved ahead. And everybody has equal opportunity in the present day government to, to be the best you can be. If whatever your trade, whatever your learning, ensure that you have a niche for yourself in Nigeria. I'm handing you over now to my colleague in Abuja, Gloria Mizuke, who has more on the news at 10. Good evening, Gloria. Thank you, Amarachi. Prosecution witnesses have accounts, have given accounts of how 30 million naira was allegedly transferred from the corporate account of a senior lawyer, Mr. Joe Agi, into the personal account of the wife of Justice Adeniyi Adimola, who is standing trial on charges of corruption. Three witnesses from Zenith and Guarantee Trust Banks presented documents to show the transfer of funds from the account of Mr. Agi into the account of Mrs. Olaboali Adimola. Lawyer to the judge, Mr. Robert Clerk, has however dismissed the testimonies of the witnesses. The trial of Justice Adeniyi Adimola, his wife, Olaboali Adimola, and a private legal practitioner, Joe Agi, continued in Abuja, with the prosecution calling three more witnesses. The first witness at the proceedings, Mrs. Fatima Sani, in her testimony says Justice Adimola demanded 25 million naira from her through a proxy, while her husband, Dr. Sani Shaibu, a former director of pension accounts in the office of the head of service, was standing trial before him in a case of missing 5.7 billion naira pension funds. Two other witnesses from Zenith and Guarantee Trust Bank also testified on the financial transactions between Mr. Joe Agi and Mrs. Olaboali Adimola. Lawyer to Mrs. Adimola, however, dismissed the allegations against his client, saying the prosecution has failed to establish any case against her. But as far as we see it, nothing has been proved yet to show the basic facts as related to the charges. We have taken an adjournment for another three days to enable them to close their case. The prosecution on his part insists that he has six more witnesses to call in order to prove his case against the accused persons. Took three, three witnesses today, which was a lot of work. You can see we are just closing. This is about 6 p.m. now, went very well, got in a lot of evidence. Not that. So how many more witnesses do you have to call? Do we have to call about six, seven more. When we come back on the 8th, 9th and 10th of uh, February, that's next week. Having taken the testimonies of the three prosecution witnesses, Justice Jude Okeke adjourned the case to the 8th, 9th and 10th of February 2017. A home sweet home, but there seems to be the opposite for some 10,000 refugees who have refused to return to their home states. They are currently taking refuge at the Kukareta town in the outskirts of Damaturu in Yobe state and have opted to permanently reside in their new home. The IDPs are complaining that the Boko Haram insurgents are still operating around their ancestral homes and will not go back home. Kukareta, a town in Yobe state, has for the past four years been a transit camp for most of the displaced persons within the northeast, particularly Borno and Yobe states. Over 18,000 households are harbored here. 
With relative peace returning to most of the northeast states bedeviled by the Boko Haram insurgency, the population of IDPs in the community has reduced to just over 10,000 households. Despite the relative peace, the remaining IDPs have opted to look for land from their host community to permanently stay in the state. Lawan Babagana, the village head of Kukareta, says the IDPs are afraid to go home, especially with pockets of attacks within their ancestral homes. The number of the people in Kukareta, IDPs, they have already reduced, really. But we still have many of them, those who are here, and they are not willing to go as of this time. And all those who are willing not to go, I already told to the Minister of Land and Cyber through local government, through Emirate Council, we write a letter to them. They have already given us an answer. We can, they can be able to get them an accommodation according to the Commissioner of Minister of Land and Cyber. The state government acknowledges the plight of the IDPs and is currently working on their resettlement. What we are doing now is, for example, in Kukareta, a lot of people have decided to stay. Together with the local government chairman, land has been uh, being allocated along the areas. So for those who are interested to stay, more boreholes have been drilled in those areas in order to assist the people to stay so that we have Imnasa water supply. The health facilities have already been expanded. So all areas that require expansion the government is doing is best in order to assist the people to those who are interested to stay in those local communities. With this show of understanding to accommodate these people, it is expected that the host community and their guests continue to live in peace and harmony. Although some displaced persons remain reluctant to return to their ancestral homes, the Victim Support Fund is stepping up efforts to rehabilitate communities devastated by Boko Haram. To this end, the VSF is planning to spend 3 billion naira on projects in Adamawa, Borno and Yobe states, 1 billion naira more than it did last year. The executive secretary of the fund, Professor Sunday Ochoche, made this known at a forum in Yola, the Adamawa state capital. Uh, thank you also for Civil society groups, nominees from targeted local government areas, representatives of the three frontline states, Adamawa, Borno and Yobe, and officials of the Victims Support Fund at a meeting to review last year's activities and the proposed rehabilitation plans for the new year. Representing the chairman of the Victim Support Fund, Ambassador John Ghana restates the commitment of the organization to the welfare of Boko Haram victims in the region. I urge all the participants at this forum to approach the three-day event with the seriousness it deserves. We at VSF lay a great store on the outcome of this forum. The executive secretary of VSF, Professor Ochoche, reveals plans to establish operational offices in Yola and Meiduguri for effective service delivery. Of all that we did in Adamawa and across the North Asian state was under 2 billion naira. But in 2017, we are going to target about 3 billion naira in our delivery to the states. For the Adama state government, the VSF in its various intervention programs has done well for the people, especially in education, healthcare, and humanitarian services. The of stakeholders of the three most of Representatives of Borno and Yobe states also contribute to the discussion. The family of those who are killed by Boko Haram, some of them are given token amount, but that token amount mean for them went in the wrong hand. The government and community leaders from Yobe state and the entire beneficiaries who benefited from this project are assuring you that the project will receive support and cooperation. At the end of the three-day deliberation, it is expected that the decision reached here will in the long run benefit the victims and aid their resettlement and rehabilitation process according to the vision 
for which the fund was set up. But still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria's central bank sells over $600 million in first forward futures transactions for 2017 in bid to clear forex demand backlog. Well, that's some business news. Just join us again.